The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was setting out on a journey when a man ran up, knelt before him, and put this question to him. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You must not kill. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not bring false witness. You must not defraud. Honor your mother, father and mother. And he said to him, Master, I have kept all these from my earliest days. Jesus looked steadily at him and loved him and he said, There is one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But his face fell at these words and he went away sad for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded by these words but Jesus insisted, My children, he said to them, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever. In that case, they said to one another, Who can be saved? Jesus gazed at them. For men, he said, it is impossible, but not for God, because everything is possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, I'm sure all of us here have got money. Money is a providential gift from God. <clears throat> it is a providential gift that has been given to us. <clears throat> One day, there was a man who has amassed a lot of money and he has been continually accumulating more and more money and he was putting some in the bank and he was keeping in the house and the only thing that he did every single day, he was keeping count of the money. And he was investing and it's, the interest was growing and he was making more and more money. <clears throat> so one day, he never used much of it and he was just uh, spending the money little for his basic needs, but most of it he kept and kept and kept. So one day, like every other day, as he was counting and he was thinking and pondering about what to do with the money, there was a knock on his door and he opened the door there stood death death stood at the door and death said to him hello I have come to take you what hey you never invite you never told me that you are coming you didn't even give me a notice that said, you didn't invite me, but I'm here to invite you. And then, that said, can we go now? <clears throat> the man said, please, 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 I've got lots of money. I cannot leave all this and go. What were you doing with the money all this while? I was just keeping it, but you never used it. But time has come, you have to go. <clears throat> and he said, give me another year. <clears throat> Sorry, no more years. Few more months, sorry, no more months. At least one more week. He said, no, sorry. At least one day, that said, no way, my friend, you have to go. <clears throat> then, that said, then he said, at least please give me one moment. That said, okay, I give you one moment. He quickly ran, got a piece of paper, and he wrote on this paper, 
I have not used my money. All of you, please start using your money immediately. Don't keep it. Use it immediately. And then he put P.S. postscript. He read. He wrote there one note. Even with all the million dollars that I have, I can't buy one more minute. I can't buy one more minute. He left there. Death took him away. <clears throat> Dear sisters and brothers, the truth is, money cannot buy happiness. Now, after saying this, if I ask you to put up your hand, how many of you need money? How many of you need money? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only a few. You're better than yesterday. At least you're 10, 20 here. The rest all don't need money. The huh? rest all don't need money. We all need money. So the rest all very reluctant because you're too much of money that you don't want to put up your hand, I think. You know? <clears throat> if I ask too much of money, Father might ask us for money. <clears throat> we all need money. But the truth is, money cannot buy happiness. You have a big bungalow and mansion. Are you happy in that mansion that you are in? At times you get angry, you know. At times you are restless. You got a big car. Does it bring you to happiness? I remember when I was working outside, I had a quite a decent car. And when I was coming back to become a priest, I had to sell my car. So Bishop said, go to Philippines to do an update of yourself for one year. So I went to the Philippines and I, and I came back. <coughs> and I was posted to a parish and I had no car. And so my nephew's wife had a four-wheel drive and she said, uncle, you can use this car for a while, no problem. So I was using it for a while. I did not ask the Bishop. And I was using it uh, a couple of months. Then one day I went to the bishop and said, Bishop, I have no car. You don't have a car? Yeah, Bishop, you didn't give me. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Bishop is so busy, a like, poor thing, you know, he had a lot of things to do. So he totally forgot giving me a car. Okay, okay, tomorrow you go to the office and get one. I said, okay, I'll go. I went to the office and there was this black old version of the Maivi. Old Maivi I had, <clears throat> it was given to me. So I took the car and I happily drove around. And I got accustomed, I began to like this simple car, very nice, my visa, now that's, nowadays my visa even more elegant. So I was using this my visa, that was not so elegant then. And then, uh, <clears throat> after a while, I was, as I was ordained, the next, very next day they said, Father, you come and collect your new car. So I went there, I got my new car, naturally far better and looking even more sleek. And so I took this car, but, when I took this car, there was no excitement whatsoever. There was no excitement at all. I am grateful, I am grateful, I am very, very grateful to God for blessing me. But the earlier car was, I was feeling so good about the only earlier car and I felt so driving so nice, so feeling so good. <clears throat> and somehow, some priests have applied for cars, they have not got yet. But again, just now they are calling me and telling me, Father, your car is old already, you will get you a new car. I said, this car is okay, but if you want to give me okay lah. <laughs> so they gave me another car, it's parked at the garage there just now, just two days old. But even then, it doesn't bring me that, you know, wow. Dear sisters and brothers, even tomorrow if I were to drive a Mercedes or Porsche or BMW, no difference to my feelings inside here. Because the car doesn't bring me happiness at all. The car is a vehicle that is given that you buy to take you from destination A to destination B. That's all. Whatever car you use doesn't matter. But it doesn't you cannot derive happiness from the car. Some of you do business with your car, grab or whatever. There is earning. So there are two types of needs. Same likewise, if you got a gorgeous woman you got married to. Happiness, or oh, handsome guy, happiness. <clears throat> the things that we have, they are utility value. 
utility value that means to say you use them the value of the car or the things that you have they are to be used they you get utility value from those things but <coughs> there is something that you call value of happiness you know the poorest who is the poorest man the one who has all the money in the world and only money nothing else he is the poorest man if i were to ask you now count all the things that you have that money cannot buy count all the things that you have that money cannot buy what are the things that you have that money cannot buy and you if you can count them many many of them you are richer than the millionaire or the billionaire you know what are those things love compassion peace grace forgiveness humility simplicity kindness mercy and we can go on the list can go on and on and where can you find them in the scriptures ask yourself do i have them when you have them abounding in you you are richer but the world look at you <coughs> you have money you have money you know when a guy i have said this before when a guy drives into an apartment with a with a kanchil or a simpler car the the the, the security guard mana pigi sabba matengo he will ask you questions when you drive in in a posh car you know what the security guard will do tabe when you have money people will tell you how are you when you don't have money people will ask you who are you same alphabet sa three at h o w w h o how are you who are you dear sisters and brothers this is the state of this world that we have that we hold on to money so much and god has blessed you god has blessed each one of us how do you give how do you share how do you receive this money how do you get this money each one of us can answer for ourselves malaysia the most corrupt one of the most corrupted country in the world top we are top we are number one for all the wrong reasons let us pray for this country very very much and pray for each other also and lots of it are cent centering around money <coughs> sad isn't it <coughs> there was once this lawyer you know, some lawyers are here maybe and doctors some doctors are here of course so this lawyer and doctor this lawyer was quite established and he was doing a good fine job and he was earning well unfortunately this doctor did not could not get a proper place to to start up his clinic and he was finding it difficult and he was trying to make ends meet so one day it struck him <coughs> to make some money he said he called one of his friend hey come let's look for a place uh, a small place where we can start a little clinic and then he said he put on that board there only 20 ringgit for consultation and for medication and then he put another sentence there 100 ringgit refundable if your problem is not solved just put there wow big crowd queuing up he was beginning to make a lot of money <coughs> this lawyer who was watching this envious and jealous he went and said i must stop this fellow la from making money <clears throat> and do something so one day he disguised himself and he went to the doctor and he said doctor i have lost my taste buds i don't i can't taste things with my tongue now can you please check me and give me some medication so the doctor called the compounder and said compounder bring the bottle number 20 bottle number 20 so then he said open your tongue open your pull out your tongue and uh, bring it out and so he took the bottle and he put a few drops of this solution 
into his onto his tongue that man said this is petrol this is petrol hey you have got your taste bud taste ready give me 20 ringgit oh my god he took 20 ringgit and he went off this fellow got me la paga this fellow chilaka punya orang i said he said now i'll surely fix him one day after a couple of months or <clears throat> maybe a, a little while longer he came back to the doctor this time i'll catch him la he told the doctor you know what doctor i have lost my memory so he said i am going to catch him this time lost my memory doctor told the compounder compounder big bring that bottle number 20 as he brought the, oh i remember this is petrol cannot cannot you've got your you have gained your consciousness 20 ringgit please look of fed up my god this will caught me again so angrily went off after a couple of months this time i am going to get him for sure he came back doctor i've lost my eyesight oh my god you have lost your eyesight i can't help you never mind compounder bring 100 ringgit because he said no 100 ringgit to give back if we cannot treat you so compounder brought gave it to him he saw it was not 100 20 ringgit no no this is 20 ringgit not 100 ringgit you have got your eyesight back <laughs> give me 20 ringgit so the doctor outwitted him and he had to go back dear sisters and brothers how many of you did this in your life <laughs> cheated other people <laughs> i'm sure you are not eh? you didn't do that la so i am saying this this is just little moment of laughter but as we look at our lives we are so blessed if you travel a little bit out of malaysia you see enough to see so many people are suffering no money not even one meal they can eat i have seen people literally even in malaysia in many other parts of the world they go into the garbage bin and pick up food right in front of my house but my in front of my eyes they have they are eating so dear sisters and brothers how grateful are we remember the guy whom i told you just now when he was the guy who was had 1 million ringgit and when the death called him and he refused to go and you know what i forgot to tell you this bit at one moment when the death called him he said can i give you 25% at least give me a few more years few more months even at the threshold of death he is negotiating why can't he give all the money i want my life more important than this money dear sisters and brothers where is your priority what do you do with the money that you have the scripture tells us in ecclesiastes the scripture in ecclesiastes tells us chapter 5 verse 10 he who loves money will not be satisfied with money nor he who loves abundance with its income this too is vanity so how much of money are we craving and dying for and wanting so much in our life and second corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 tells us each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver so my dear sisters and brothers today's gospel that man walked away sad because he was man of great wealth and jesus told him go and give to the poor and you will be in the kingdom of god so my dear sisters and brothers let us learn to give which our way to whoever you discern that you should give please give because god will bless you bountiful manifold this is my little experience and let us pray for this grace 
to be able to give. I know you are giving in your own way, many of you. In fact, uh, in this church, I see there are a lot of givers. Let us continue to give. Don't remain, those of you who are not giving enough or not giving at all, let us not remain takers. Let us be givers. There is great joy in giving. Whatever it may be, the Lord loves the cheerful giver. God bless you. God loves you. Amen.